Okay, well, hello all and welcome to our live winery education webinar. We are so excited to be able to virtually travel to Germany. And today we discover one of the most iconic wineries of the Rheingau in the village of Johannesburg. I would like to introduce you to Stefan Dotter, the managing director of Schloss Johannesburg. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Nick. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody can good hear me. Warm greetings from uh, beautiful sunny weather in uh, Johannesburg, Germany. Uh, yes, we are quite in the middle of our harvest, so we are blessing with good and sunny and stable weather condition, what we are really appreciate. And yes, my name is Stefan Doktor. I'm since 15 years uh, on Schloss Johannesburg, since 2016, the managing director here. Excellent. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan, let's go ahead and begin. Why is Schloss Johannesburg known as the architect of Riesling? Very good question, Nick. The right question is always why, not what, and not, not how. The question is why. <laughs> and um, to answer this question, I have to grab in the history of Schloss Johannesburg because there is a one thing uh, which is very important, and that is the fact that wine has been produced on our place since more as a 1200 years when you imagine that the oldest written document about winemaking is from the year 817 then you understand why look this is a cell document is copy of selling contract from the year 817 and this document is written that the people here were able to produce 6,000 liter wine annually. Uh, some hundred years later, they grounded the first monastery. It was grounded as a Benedictine monastery. And uh, the monks who lived here decided in the year 1720 to plant just one grape variety and replace the whole vineyard with Riesling only. And so what? we count as the oldest Riesling producer of the world. But uh, to grab in the history means for us to get a lot of inspiration even today, because the Benedictine monks who lived here, they didn't get a job like we have or the people have it generally. They get much more a mission. They was looking to create a meaning. They try to make a difference. And they are all things which inspire us even today uh, for by um, our daily work. And that's the answer or your question why we are doing that, what we are doing. So we have three beautiful pictures. Thank you, Rachel, for this for this presentation and for this slide where we can see the the terroir of Schloss Johannesburg, which is quite unique. And uh, I have to say, since 15 years, I'm falling in love every day when I'm going to my work and approaching Schloss Johannesburg. So um, we are positioning in the region Rheingau, which is in the very middle of Germany, put more on the western side, directly on the Rhine River. You can see it here. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, the difference or the distance to Rhine River is approximately 1.5 kilometer. So the, the Rhine River uh, br bring us a very steady and warm weather condition. But the Rhine gives us as well the humidity we need during the harvest uh, time, during the autumn, because uh, the humidity allowed us to to create noble sweet wine based on Botrytis cinerea. And as you know, the noble road, road need a little bit more um, humidity. Yes, uh, so the, we are in the region Rheingau, the Schloss Johannesberg. Um, the Schloss Johannesberg has a very special terroir. We are standing on a hill and the hill is built by stone called quartzite. And this stone, as you see, the color is quite, quite uh, gray with some um, uh, brown, light brown um, hues. This is a this is a part of the soil which pro provide us with huge minerality, what we need, and warm as well from the down. But there is a layer of of clay. And the clay has a very high content of iron dioxide. 
So if you think about terroir of Schloss Johannesburg, you can always say it's a quartzite with claim and iron. And the claim on the top is something what is now very, very important because claim has the ability to keep humidity. And uh, as we all know, there is a lot of changes in the climate uh, in the world and in our region as well. To be honest, to 50%, we are blessed, <laughs> blessed because the warm and temperature bring us uh, very ripe um, grapes and a very good ripe level on the grapes. Physiology ripeness is perfect, but what we are fighting against is uh, drought. So we have not enough humidity or much less humidity like we have, like we had before. And this claim, this clayy part on the top of the hill, keep the water, keep the humidity and protect um, and supply the plants with water. And this is uh, one of the most important things when we look in the future. So we have hum soil which can keep humidity. So let's a little bit talk about the, about the single vineyard Schloss Johannesburg because this is something special what we have. We have a Awan appellation. The name Schloss Johannesburg doesn't belong only to the castle. The name Schloss Johannesburg belong as well to the vineyard, which is lying directly below the castle. And uh, and uh, uh, within of this one hill, we are able to produce in the moment when everything is running good, 11 different styles of Riesling. And this is the true face of Riesling. As we say always, Riesling is a winemaker's heaven, but sometimes marketing disaster because you don't know really what is in the bottle because you are able to produce wine from bone dry up to sweet until you die. And the beauty of Riesling is beginning in the youth and you can drink a very young and fresh Riesling, but you can wait for hundreds of years. And sometimes when you get the possibility to taste the Riesling, which is 100 years old, you will feel how a huge uh, aging potential the wine could be held. And what's allowed us to make a different um, steps and different styles of wine we have inside of one single vineyard, which is a half circle, southly faced from southeast into the southwest. In the different plots of these vineyards, we are able to produce a different styles of the wine because we have slightly different condition in the soil. The, the, the compare between stone and clay and iron is always different. And then you have different microclimate condition, which allows you to work very focused and to make a distinct style of wine and that's our strengths. Rachel, be so kind please and switch to the timeline with the history because I began already with uh, history a little bit. I just checked the time because otherwise Nick will kill me when I will talk it too much. So eight minutes, we are good on the time. Okay, um, I began with the history with 817 when, uh, when uh, the oldest written document about wine making was issued and um, monastery, which was grounded in 11th century and then in the beginning of 12th century. And then when you look more, you see that monastery survived for a very long time. Just imagine we are talking about 700 years, so unbelievable. And within these 700 years, as a, the most important things, what happened is that the monks took the decision to replant the whole vineyards with just one grape variety, and they planted the first monoculture and planted, planted 1720 Riesling only. That's why we are the oldest Riesling producer on the planet Earth. 1775, the next steps. 55 years later, they discovered something beautiful, something where we will taste today, but later, one which called Spätlese or late harvest. And uh, that's happened by chance because the monks, they lived here, they were not allowed to begin the harvest until the boss doesn't taste the grape personally. But the boss, it was a bishop, and this bishop was living 200 kilometers far, far away. That's why they sent every and a courier, postman riding on the horse with the samples of the grapes. Don't ask me how look grapes after seven days running on the horse <laughs> must be must be very funny but when the bishop tastes the grape and he was satisfied with the quality he gives them permission and they could start the harvest 
And these things works always, but not in the year 1775, because this postman was once late, two weeks later, like usual, and so when he finally arrived, which two weeks, uh, two weeks um, later, the grapes inside of the vineyards were already getting overripe and were catched with Botrytis cinerea, and they decided to make a harvest and make a wine, and when they finish the wine, they find out this is the best wine they ever drank. And they decided to keep this uh, kind, how to produce wine in their own, and discovered this new kind of sweet wines and created the first sweet wines. And within the years, 1800, until up to 1858, this is the fourth, yes, exactly, Rachel, this is the time where they discovered the first ice one. We cannot prove that we produced the first ice one in the history on the planet Earth, but we can say and we can we can we can we know that we created the first ice wine already in the year 1858 to be honest in those time is it very difficult for us to produce ice wine since i'm on schloss johannesberg we get two vintages 2008 and 2018 where we are able to produce ice wine yes and 1971 is the last very important time slot on Schloss Johannesberg in the history because on this year we became exclusive uh, exclusive appellation as an exclusive uh, single winner on Schloss Johannesberg which is quite unique in the Germany at all. Yes, what you mean um, Nick is the time to begin a tasting of the wine? Yeah, let's let's go ahead and transfer to the wine discussion. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the label and a little bit of technical information regarding the wines. Great. I will do it together with the wine. Perfect. And I will take the first wine. You have a beautiful picture as well on your on your slide and you can see it. This is a Gelblack wine which we called Gelblack and the name the Gelblack mean yellow. The word Gelb is a German word for yellow. And that's mean that the cap of this wine is yellow colored. Why we are using the name according to the colors, the ground for that and the reason is we have just a one single vineyard. And we have just one grape variety called Riesling, but we are able to create different style of the wine. And uh, former Abner from Schloss Johannesberg, when the era of Benedictine monks ended, was the Prince Metternich. And Prince Metternich, who was the owner, he decided in the year 1820 to, to close the bottle, similar like a documents or leather, to use a color seal, just a bottle which was, which was closed with a nature cork, he put into the, into the seal. And on the Magnum bottle, you can see the, Still today, it's a seal like they use on, on letters or documents. And the different colors of these, of these seals were used to sign on different quality steps. So the yellow seal, gel black, is our quality entry. That means one is coming from the single vineyard, Schloss Johannesberg only, to 100% single vineyard, but it's coming from the whole vineyard. So there is no a different distinct plot in the vineyards this wine is come from all over and displays a very good the style of of, uh, of what we what we have in a, as a terroir. The fermentation of the wine was made for ninety or eighty five percent in in stainless tank. So the biggest part is stainless tank um, the fermentation to save a beautiful aroma of the wine and make the wine very fresh. But fifteen percent of the wine is fermented in wooden barrel. And the wood of barrel fermentation, especially for dry wine, has a very long history on Schloss Johannesberg, not necessary, usual for Riesling or for wine white at all, but we have very good experience with, with, old, with big barrels. And the barrels we are using for fermentation are, ma are made from our oak, from our, our forest, which is lying directly uh, beside of the vineyard Schloss Johannesberg. So the Gelblack, which is harvested in the whole vineyard and fermented for 85% in stainless tank, 15% in wooden barrel, 
it's a beautiful wine well, with yes while you're tasting the wine um stefan i know you and i have discussed a few times each vintage might be a little different sometimes you mentioned that uh, a vintage of gelblack will be 90 percent stainless 10 german oak uh this vintage the 18 happens to be right around 85 15 so uh, typically in our technical sheets, we talk about the fermentation and we probably need to get a little bit more detailed where we can actually do it by vintage. But 90-10 is usually what you told me is the typical uh, blend. Is that correct? Yes. And that is the reason why, to be honest, the the main meaning is stainless tank, but we have new cask. And uh, new because we are re renewing always our barrels and the new oak is if you will do 100% wooden fermentation, the new oak will be too strong for Riesling. But if you imagine that you have only 10%, sometimes 15, and in some vintages could be even 20, you can make blend with stainless tank, and this make the wine very round, very, very soft in the, in, in, in the structure, helps him a little bit to get more body and more muscles, but doesn't influence the aroma of the wine too strong and this is the way how we work for example in this year i can tell you secret <laughs> we have the first barrels in the double size so normally we are using 1200 liter size barrel and this year we have new bottles with 2400 liters so and as well the this kind of fermentation will be as a first going into the gelblack in this year in the vintage 2023 just to imagine how it how it works i have to tell you we have a wine which is beautiful has a 90 points by robert parker if we can see um, 92 points by james suckling uh, the last vintage was on um, uh, even rake, uh, ranked with um, 93 points by suckling and um, the ratings for robert parker for the current vintages just released are not yet published but i think within the two weeks will be will, must be published so when we when we just uh, Check the nose. We have a beautiful combination of yellow stone fruits. What I really feel in this wine today is a yellow plum in combination with some apricots notes. There are some floral notes, even those a little bit herbs. Yes. The, um, the wine is slightly dry, but to be honest, it's off dry because there is a hint of residual sugar on this wine, and this um, and this level of the residual sugar is by 13.7 gram, which makes the wine rounder and softer and easy to understand and easy to approach. The acidity level is by 7.4.4, which keep the wine fresh but it's not too, too high in acid. And that is very nice because you keep the freshness, you have very good balanced body on the wine, and the wine is uh, absolutely perfect in combination with food. And um, on this, uh, on this uh, point, I can say anything what you are, when you are working with fish dishes, and we, on the Rhine River, we have a pike perch. Uh, we have a trout, which works very good. Very typical for us is salmon. So any kind of roasted salmon or roasted trout or or, or uh, roasted on the butter works very good with this wine. But as well, some seafood with herbs and garlic and even my absolutely favorite dishes in U dish in USA is a crab cake, which I really love to eat. So I always when I'm there, I as a first I try to order a um, crab cake because it's something what we are not what we not have in the Germany. But this is even is is not a high end food. It's quite simple, but with wine, wine like this works perfect. Well, we'll make sure we get you to the right restaurant that serves the best crab cakes next time you come to the U.S. Um, can you tell us what fine herb QBA? Can you explain that maybe in uh, just a minute? Yes. Um, so the, the the fine herb in QBA means so QBA is the quality step. So that's mean um, all our dry wines are ranked as a QBA. So got 
tanks, we have the different color when we can uh, create a different quality and sign the different quality steps. And the word fine herb is something what we can uh, very easy translate like off dry. So off dry means the wine is dry, but not completely dry. As we say in Germany, dry enough. So uh, even those people who like dry wines are, are, are satisfied with the wines, but with a slightly heat of rational sugar, which is typical for fine herb, make it everything rounder, softer, and easier to approach, as I told you. And works really good with any kind of food, because in the combination food and wine is a sugar, is a problem in the food, but the joker in the wine. That's me. <laughs> when you have a higher sweetness level in food, there is a difficult to work with wines. But if you have food which is quite intense in taste and aroma and, and, and flavor, and you have slightly sweetness in wine, you have perfect combination. Sugar in wine, slightly sugar in wine helps you always. Excellent. Thank you very much, Stefan. Let's roll into the Grunlach. Grunach, yes, I already showed this bottle because this is our late harvest, our Spätlese, wine which we discovered in the year 1775 by chance, as I told you already. And you know what? This is the true DNA for Schloss Johannesburg. Because of this wine, we are getting, we, are, we were getting so famous. What I didn't tell you, after the discovery, 1775, 18 years later, came to visit Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson makes a huge travel through the Europe and he brought his journey book. And he, his journey book is standing, if you are traveling through Germany, Rheingau, interrupt your journey in Johannesburg and visit the monastery. We, have, we used to be monastery in those times. And he wrote, the wine are excellent, the best on the whole country. Unfortunately, I'm not able to buy, the wine is too expensive. <laughs> Uh, no fear, the wine is no more so expensive like it like used to be, but the quality is still very high like, like it was in those times. So, uh, Grünlack, our Spätlese, is coming from the lower part of the vineyard. There is a reason for that, because I explained you, this is a stone. The upper part of the vineyard is very stony, very dry. But when you go down in the footsteps of the hill, you have a very good supply with water. And when you have higher humidity in, 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 in soil, the grapes are riper and the sugar concentration is higher. And that's what we look for. But to be honest, not the sugar is the thing in this wine. There is something completely uh, others. We need two things. We need physiology ripeness of the grape and we need acidity. So what is our biggest challenge in those days with this climate changing is to save every milligram of acidity. So, but we are not a great barrier reef in Australia, which could not protect himself. We can protect us, we can work. So what we do, the plants are growing higher like they used to grow just to get a more shadow on the other plants. We are protecting the zone of the, of the fruits with the leaves from mostly from the western side. So just imagine, by the way, the hill behind me is the Schloss Johannesberg. And from the eastern part, we remove the leaves. And from the western part, we let them completely covered. So we let the early morning sun depending on the grapes. But during the lunchtime already, during the noon, the sun is uh, uh, on the top and there is already shadow. And when it's followed to the western part, it's perfectly protected in shadow and we save every milligram of acidity. And that's what makes this wine so beautiful because uh, there is a lot of sweet wines in the world, as we know, but there are less sweet wines which are very successful. And the most of the problem of the sweet wines is that they are boring with the sweetness because sweet, 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 after you die, but what you need is balance. Balance is the key word. This is the secret. To keep it well balanced, you need a huge acidity. And that's how we work. We have physiology ripe grapes, yellow, very, very healthy, and we have a high portion of acidity. And then we just follow the fermentation up to the point where we say, stop. This sweetness we like to have in order to create 
perfect balanced paid lese. This is the reason why we got ratings like uh, 100 points for 2019 vintage, um, uh, 99 points by MJ Suckling for 2020 and 2022. Um, so great, great um, uh, stuff. And when you check the aroma, you have so huge portion of sweet citrus, fru citrus fruits in combination with exotic fruits and some flowers. But the most important things is the taste. And the beauty is the first sweet attack in your mouth and then you need 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, the acidity approach can clean the sweetness from your mouth away. And in the end, on a certain after 30 seconds, you, you forgot all the sweetness and you have only a huge lemon here in, the, in, in, in your mouth. You have the acidity and freshness and you think, give me more, please. Combination in food is very important because sometimes you have one like this and you ask yourself, what can, what can I do with one like this? As a first, you can always drink spätlese as an aperitif. And you can drink the spätlese after meal. But there are some foods which works perfectly and I can recommend spicy food. It could be Asia. It's good. It could be Oriental style. And um, to be honest, my wife is completely crazy. I mean, she, she loves <laughs> spicy food. But I mean, it's it's already out of normal what, what she did. But two days ago, she tried to kill me. She makes a curry with <laughs> mussels and she told me, ah, I did a small mistake. It's a little bit more spicy as usual. And I said, okay, no problem. I'm hungry. Try it. Twice during the dinner, I jump out and go to the toilet to wash my face because I was crying. And the only things you can, what can save your life is spätlese. Believe me, the only thing to bring all the spiciness away. So it works very good with spicy food. Uh, you know what? I think my wife and your wife need to spend some time together because she's exactly that way. I, I, it's unbelievable how much spice. Stefan. Thank you so much for your time today. I can't believe that uh, our 30 minutes has already come to a, an end. Um, team, I mean, what a story. These wines are tremendous. Uh, you're selling the architect of Riesling. This producer, Schloss Johannesburg, and the wines that are being produced here set the bar for all other German Riesling houses. So it's important that we seek out the right clients for these wines. You get your distributor on board. They're out there showing the wines. Um, you know, we love to focus on high-end on-premise, high-end off-premise, but at the end of the day, this wine is open to all opportunities, like like uh, Stefan just mentioned, even that your your local uh, your local uh, Chinese or uh, Thai food restaurant. So, Stefan, thanks so much. Thirty minutes are up. We're going to stay online. I know some of you need to go, uh, but if you don't need to go, we're going to stay online for just a few more minutes and go ahead and um, ask, uh, do some, do a little bit of Q&A for some people that do have questions. But Stefan, thank you so much. I'm going to send it to you right now just to say thank you to the team. Um, so go ahead, Stefan. You are you are great. Thank you for, for attention. And uh, what I forgot to tell you regarding the Spätlese, there is one thing that I'm always using to say, this wine is since 250 years in the portfolio from Schloss Johannesburg. Just imagine, we are talking about wine which is on the price list since 250 years. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Stefan. I, I can't wait to come visit you one day and I'm sure you'd love to have everybody come visit you one day as well. And we can't wait to have you in the market. So. We're going to go ahead and end our webinar and um, we're going to stay online. So if you do have any questions, uh, please stay online, type them into the presentation. If you'd like, you can jump on and, and ask your question uh, live if you like. So thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you everyone for attending.